I think there's a tendency when people mention about AI to think of it as a big homogenous thing that, you know, is all going to take over the world and, you know, it's going to be a big problem when actually in our everyday lives, you know, whether it be opening a bank account or um, when we get emails from brands, actually they're using AI to sort of communicate with us and we're interacting with AI and therefore specific use cases and housing should think about AI in that way as well. So, and there's different types of AI, you know, you've got the predictive AI, which many housing providers we've seen use to look at things like, you know, people's um, potential to fall into rent arrears or um, for boilers to, to break down. What the shift is now is that with the sort of new generative AI models that are available and the capability that's there is where is that data in the past may have driven some action but being relatively siloed to an analytical platform what generative ai does is enable you to much more quickly respond to customer need or the organizational need in the moment in which it happens um, and also to be able to really sort of summarize great amount of data which the sector has lots of um, in a much more constructive way that enables people to have a two-way dialogue with that data, get the information they need, whether that be serving that to a customer through a, a web portal or chatbot, or whether that be a, a customer service agent who's taking a phone call and being able to get, get uh, recommendations on what the next best action is, um, and then allowing them to have summarized notes post that call on you know what was said, what should the next follow-ups be, and having that sort of AI as your sort of assistant working with you to, to, to break down some of those barriers.